Welcome along to episode 729 of the Milk Bar. Jason Forrest here with you. As ever. And coming up on the show this week, Professor Gatrad OBE joining us to let us know all about a play, which is going to be on over in Warsaw. It is called The Plastic Migrant. We'll be finding out about that. We'll be hearing all about the amazing Three Counties Showgrounds, Royal Three Counties Show. That runs from the 16th, 17th and 18th of June. Worth getting yourself along with that one. Also, on the Saturday night, the 17th of June, we have Improv Walls playing the theatre on the steps in Bridge North, so we'll be catching up with the boys there. And on top of that, we'll be talking about World Ocean Day and finding out how they released two turtles back into the wild to mark the auspicious event for this year. That's all on the way on the show this week. Welcome to the Milk Bar. 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 Uh, welcome to the Milk Bar. Uh. Improv Wolves are back in action. This time they snuck over to the Theatre on the Steps. It all takes place on Saturday the 17th of June. And I'm joined now by four of the boys. Hello. Hey. Hello. Hi. Right, Hello. This, is, this is technically all of you, isn't it, I think? Yeah, the whole pack. And actually, yes. What what's the proper collective noun then this time? Have you got have you have you come up with a good one? A pack, surely. The pack, the pack, pack is good enough. A pack or a whinge. A confusion of improvisers. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. An embarrassment. <laughs> Fingers crossed it's none of those as as far as embarrassment goes on Saturday. So uh, who's gonna tell me what your thoughts are towards the show? Because I mean this this is there's a whole feel around what's gone on before. Uh, should we start with uh I don't know, Lawrence. Yes. Uh, so, what's gone on before? So, I think since we last saw you, we've done uh, we've done a show in Birmingham and we did one in Bath. Um, both went really well. The, uh, the Bath one was part of the Bath Fringe. And did, did you have um, subtitles for that one so they could tell what you were saying? They did. Well, they, they, we got they chased us out of town because we kept saying Bath and they wanted us to say Bath. But, but we, uh, it rhymes with Bath. Yeah. Yes, Bath. So, yes, so we got chased out of town with pitchforks and et cetera, and burning flaming torches. But no, no, it was lovely. We had a great time there. So hopefully we'll have the same in Bridge North. Well, the, the pitchforks thing. Well, no, no, the, oh, yeah. the time, the, the real thing that happened. But well, maybe, <laughs> I don't know. It's fun. Yeah. Uh, but, and, uh, and Matthew then, Mr. Divins, uh, give us your thoughts on improvisational comedy in the uh, the, the, the current century. Um, uh, well, I mean, uh, I've been... Uh... I've been with this lot for a while now and I've been really enjoying it with this group. They're a great bunch. And um, yeah, I mean, we're, st- we're doing short form games as far as I'm aware, as long as nothing's changed much. I've, I haven't been in the past few shows with them, so uh, I'm a bit, little bit out of touch. But... but that just means you're bringing new ideas in. Yeah, that's it. Yes, I'll be off on my own tangent. So uh, <laughs> you know, hopefully I'll be able to keep, keep up with them, actually, because I, I might be a little bit. A little bit out of practice. No, I've still been practicing. I promise. Is, I'm still, uh... is that a window, Matt? Behind it you? is, unfortunately. Yeah. No, no. no the, um, we're thinking the other side. The shoulder. The other side. <laughs> oh, this. The lake. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the Lake District. Yeah. <laughs> is that your own picture, or is it something from Athena posters in 1994? Yeah, it's one of them ones. I think my uh, partner. She just got it from a from a charity shop. She loves a bargain, so it would be. Uh, just one out of there, either that or the tip shop down the road. So <laughs> some sort of some sort of bargain somewhere, definitely. Uh, so Lee, uh, with, with your approach to uh, the forthcoming gig, uh, will you be wearing a vest on the night as you are now? As little as possible. As That's little. compulsory, yeah. Um, I'm going to treat it as you know, see how the night unfolds, and then where there isn't humour, bring out the flesh, and then just hope the laughter keeps everyone in a in a <laughs> set to a bit public. It's it's normally Robert does that, isn't it? Uh, we're on a rotation. Okay, <laughs> and yeah, Mr. Lane, um, what have you got uh, in your arsenal when it comes to these interesting games? Oh, you want to be careful with words like Arsenal if you think Lee's going to be burying the flesh. But still, uh, we will be playing some of the games that we we play that people might recognise from um, short form improv shows of the past, like. Um, What's it called? Whose line is it anyway? But also some things that we've invented. And over the last few shows, actually, this interesting thing's happened where for bits of it, we kind of feel like not playing a game where we have to a, a sort of set structure and, and things that we have to achieve, but just being like, we've got a game called This Isn't a Game, where we literally just a couple of performers will create a scene from some sort of 
um, stimulus from the audience. And we've been really enjoying doing that because it allows us to do slightly longer scenes. They're still funny, but we might get a bit more character development because there's this thing when you're playing the games, we love short form games, but you're always kind of trying to win the game. <laughs> and sometimes the best best stuff happens actually when the game isn't the most important thing. In yeah. Germany, it tends to be the characters and the, the setting that kind of brings the best stuff, I think. So we've, we've been having fun experimenting with that. But that's one of the joys of doing a show like this. It's so hard to plug because I can't really tell you what's going to happen because we don't know yet. Because it as much depends on what people in the audience suggest as, as what we do, really, which is a lot of fun. I mean, it means you can be topical as well. I mean, it's not like politics doesn't give you enough to work with when it does you know, a few names get thrown out. Yes. Yeah, we, we can be topical. We can react to stuff that's happened on the day or literally in the room as we're, mm. as we're going through. Uh, you know, we often find with stuff that like local, you, you get this localism where a town wants you to be mean about the next town along. And when we're playing in Bath or Bath or Tunbridge Wells or Guildford, which is some of the places we've got coming up, those jokes are lost on us a little bit. Whereas Bridge North, <laughs> we might be a bit more at home with the having fun at the localism. We'll see. Absolutely, because uh, uh, you get many people who uh, live in Bridge North and then commute to the likes of Wolverhampton. Your, you know, your your spiritual home. That's right. Yeah, and I, I think. There's a fair um, diaspora of Wolverhamptoners, isn't there? In, uh, Look at him showing off. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just trying to put you lot down by using diaspora. Got, I, I just thought that was something out of water when the sun had been out. <laughs> Yeah. Lawrence, I mean, yeah. with you know, your your status uh, within the uh, the comedy world as well, you've got something to live up to here. What what status is that? Uh, you, come <laughs> on, you, surely you've got your own Wikipedia page. Have I? Well, well there is. A, uh, the I, I, don't know, I thought I thought you you for Wikipedia. Lee was only fans. We're not entirely yes, sure what right. Mr. Divins is doing. It's something to do with the pantomime donkey. And Rob Lane is <laughs> all about his music very often. He is, but I think the Wikipedia page. Of Lawrence Saunders is actually a Protestant martyr who was burned at the stake. Um, a lot of similarities. Season. There is still well, time. I mean, there's still time, Lawrence. There's still time <laughs> for me to be burnt at the stake. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to say anything about whether that is uh, preferable to visiting Coventry because that's where the other Lawrence Saunders was, uh, where he was burnt at the stake. So that's the, the Wikipedia page. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say really. Um, about Other than comedy. beg someone to do your Wikipedia page, that's meaningful. Well, yeah, I should do, shouldn't I? Really, and, because it, yeah, it is. But there's another, there's another Lawrence Saunders on the internet who was um, in his late sixties and was arrested after climbing into an old lady's bedroom naked with a with a shotgun. So I, I don't, I don't want to be associated with that. I'm not, you know, I don't mind being associated with religious martyrs, but not with people climbing into other people's bedrooms with shotguns. You, yeah, you, you just have to stick with the contra deals. Those are lovely veneers, aren't they? So that, that all helps too. <laughs> I think it's the lighting. I haven't got veneers. Okay, we believe you. Um, <laughs> Matthew, apart from me, your partner's interesting uh, you know, selection of uh, pictures on the wall, I mean, what else uh, are you looking forward to most about being led out for a change? Yeah, well, that's very true, actually. Um, uh, I'm looking forward to the singing part where we get to create our own songs in the moment. I do enjoy that. It's probably the most challenging part, but I do enjoy... As, as far, we're still doing some singing games, aren't we? Yeah, just, I was just, uh, no, just making just, a joke. We decided no, not to do that anymore, sorry. <laughs> yeah, because you enjoy it. Oh, right, OK. <laughs> there you go. So, <laughs> okay, well, not, there's that bit true. gone. Uh, well, I just, just look true. forward to working with this lot again. That'll be... That'll yeah, be no, nice. they, they will let you sing. It's OK, as long as you can just about carry a tune without somebody's help. And uh, I think final thoughts from Leah. So we mentioned the OnlyFans. I mean, is that going to be your main you know, thing you're going to be plugging throughout the night, getting as many of the audience involved? I think it would be good business sense to divert a little attention to it. Um, looking forward to the to the venue, to be in, in the theatre. Uh, Bath, we were upstairs at a lovely venue uh, called The Grapes, and uh, the audiences were, were fabulous, but it's going to be great working in a sort of dedicated performance space, um, much like the arena was. Mm. The setup is a little different, and that rapport with the audience is a little different too. Yeah, well, the, the arena, they're, they're very full-on straight in front of you. You've got, it's, it's a full-on curved theatre, isn't it? And, uh, you know, it's a, it's got a, the, the little bar and stuff is just behind. So it, it's got a great feel to it. And uh, I think you'll uh, really enjoy the theatre on the steps, as long as you can cope with the steps. Uh, so uh, fingers <laughs> crossed that... Uh, there's a lot of steps there, isn't there? Well, it, yeah, the, the, the theatre on the stairs or the theatre on the landing is not quite so good, is it? So <laughs> the theatre on the steps... Is the way they are. I mean, treacherous in the winter, fantastic in June, so you'll be fine. Well, fingers crossed. 
<laughs> yeah. right. who's, who's head of giving us all the contact details for tickets and then of course where we can find you on uh, the, all the social media outlets and TikTok that's probably going to be me I guess isn't you it? do talk a lot, go for it the three just sort of look like that uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, Saturday the 17th of June which is this coming Saturday, the show's at 7.30 tickets are available from the Theatre on the Steps website which is uh, their written website. in front of him yeah, theatreonthesteps.co.uk, I imagine. Um, you can find more about us. We're at improv underscore wolves on Twitter and Instagram. And we've recently just created a little website for ourselves, which is improvwolfcomedy.substack.com. It's sort of like a mailing list slash blog. Um, people can join the mailing list there and they'll receive infrequent correspondence about the things that are, we're up to. Um, and we have got some more shows coming up over the rest of the summer. We're doing a couple more fringe festivals. Mm-hmm. And we think we've got a Birmingham venue for the middle of the summer as well. The details are just being put together for that one. Ooh, finalised. Everything's been finalised. That's right. We're liking Sorry. it. They are improv wolves. They're normally much better than this. You can see them at the theatres <laughs> on the steps on the 17th of June. Bit. <laughs> Get along. Have a brilliant time. They will be awesome. Can see we you have boys. that for the poster? Don't yes, you can have that one. And <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> see you soon. Thanks, Jase. Thank, Thank you. Jace. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Now, we're just days away from the Royal Three Counties show for 2023. Alice Arnold, head of shows, is here to let me know what's going on. And we find her walking around one of the fields. Hello. Hello. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. I hope we find you well and looking forward to what's going to be a fantastic three-day event. Absolutely. I don't know if you can see behind me, we've got the gorgeous Malvern Hills behind me, the members' tent, which you can see the sign is just going up. Uh, We've got all the sheep tents in the background and then... uh, grandstands have arrived this morning i'm literally walking out into the middle of our main arena with you uh, so uh, where you are now will there'll be about six thousand animals making their way through that space over the weekend and i mean that's going to be an amazing sight and, and so important to understand the whole of our food chain that's very true there's a lot of educational elements to this but actually we try and make it all fun so yes there's animals here there's you can go through a cheese and dairy trail and look at the process of how milk makes it into cheese and with lots of tasters, obviously, which everyone likes, uh, we are going to have, um, there's a whole sort of education area in terms of wool we're focusing on this year, um, particularly because we've got a, um, an international sheep shearing competition going on where people have travelled from around the world to be here and compete. So it's going to be absolutely amazing. And that's not the only competition, is it? Because I know that there are some finals for the wood cutting. And we're not just talking of about cutting up some little bits of wood here to maybe create a fire and that wood burner at home. We're talking about absolutely massive bits of wood as part of an international event. We do. So the timber sports competition, we've got still bringing their British championships to us this weekend. Mm-hmm. And they're going to have um, competitions involving chainsaws, axes and big long saws as well. Um, and there's classes for uh, the British Championships, but also women's classes, veterans, and a rookie competition as well. So it's not something you can come and have a go at, but you can certainly be in awe of. It is absolutely amazing. It may inspire you to ask about getting involved at a, a, a later date. So that could be an interesting one. And it's probably really good for, for, for health and building muscle too, isn't it? So it's a, it's a brilliant uh, event. <laughs> And what else have you got in store? Because I'm expecting to see some uh, parachutists coming in as previous. We have the Red Devils coming in every day as planned. Well, hopefully the weather will play ball and so far it's looking great. Um, We've got Paul Hannum and his quad bike stunts on the Friday. And we've got the Imps, which is an under 18 uh, motorbike demonstration group. They're going to be performing on the um, Saturday and the Sunday. We've also got Pony Club Mounted Games, um, Prince Philip Cup Mounted Games. And so we've got some really good teams coming um, who hopefully will get to the Horse of the Year show at the end of the year. Um, we've got scurry driving, show jumping. Um, we've got the Interhunt Relay on the Sunday. Uh, we've also got a machinery demo in the main arena. Now, that's great because it's you know it will explain what those instruments are that you see out on the road. What is that machine and how is it involved in farming and, and our food production? So, again, it's, it's all part of that education, part of making it fun, but also the interest there is there because you can go behind the scenes and see little things that you wouldn't normally see even if you were to visit a working farm. So this is a, a chance to do that. And, of course, all that alongside some great guests in the tents for the talks and also the show ambassador down there too. Absolutely. So our show ambassador is Adam Henson from BBC's Country File, 
and he's fantastic. He's going to be here all three days and involved in lots of elements around the show. And then we've also got Caleb Cooper from Clarkson's Farm. He's going to be here on the Saturday. And then we've got some other guests coming on the Sunday. So we've got England rugby legend and celebrity master chef champion, Phil Vickery, joining us on Sunday for Father's Day. And we also have um, JLF band member and farmer, JB Gill, coming on Sunday too. And what else is that we need to know about this weekend's forthcoming event? Oh gosh, there is so much going on. Um, there's lots of space to bring your own food for a picnic or there's every sort of street food you can imagine. So no one needs to cook on Father's Day weekend. Uh, we've got a brilliant food and drink festival. Um, that's got a demo cookery theatre in there. And there's lots of tasters in there as well. We've got a new English wine show um, and the cheese and dairy trail, which I mentioned earlier, as well as the cider and perry festival and live music in that area all weekend. Uh, we've got pole climbing in the forestry area. Um, we've got a countryside arena, which is full of the most amazing displays involving falconry, sheep dogs and gun dogs, mini ponies to shire horses. Well, it always is an amazing event. You've already mentioned the fact it's got a wonderful backdrop as well. So it is well worth getting yourself along to. And the best way of getting tickets is by buying them in advance. That's it. You get a reduction in price if you buy them in advance from threecounties.co.uk. Tickets are £23 if you buy them now or they're £28 on the gate. And whichever way you do it, well worth getting yourself along to. You can buy up till midnight the day before and get that discounted price. And uh, then if you are just, oh, no, Sunday, we haven't got Dad's present sorted. Well, actually, make him drive you, possibly. Or if, if, if you drive, drive him down to the Royal Three County Showground in Malvern. And it's only just about an hour away. And it is absolutely amazing. And uh, you, of the three counties involved, you have a lead county this year. Is there anything specific? It's Gloucester, isn't it? Is there anything specifically Gloucester for this year? Well, there's the Gloucester cattle, obviously, and in fact, all the Gloucester breeds. We've got the Cotswold sheep as well. And the Gloucester old spot pigs, they're going to be front and centre. <laughs> um, we've got a brilliant future of farming theatre right in the centre of the showground. And that's going to be running events for farmers, looking at the hot topics in farming at the moment, like uh, regenerative farming, carbon trading, water quality, soil health, etc. Um, and there's also some really good sessions in there for anyone wanting to get into careers in the countryside or farming. Um, there's lots of ideas about and talking to people who've been there and done it and lots of ideas about how to get involved. Well, it's, it's always worth coming down to. And you'll even have the likes of the uh, NFU down there to talk about you know, that side of the farming business too. There's, there's background to it, as well as uh, you know all the, the groups and all the sponsors who are down there who'll be more than happy to talk to you about uh, uh, their products and services and how they can make you know, the amazing countryside work so well for us and, and make sure we've got great food and drink for many, many decades to come. Well, Alice, it's going to be amazing. Uh, Threecounties.co.uk to get to yourself online, get your tickets. I'm looking forward to coming down there and seeing you and the rest of the team on Friday. Fantastic. We look forward to seeing you. On the 28th and 30th of June and on the 1st of July, the Plastic Migrant is going to be performed. It's all taking place at the Great Worley Academy Hall in Great Worley. Someone who can tell me a lot more about this is Professor Abdul Gatrad, who joins me now. Hello, sir. Hello. Well, thank you very much for inviting me, Jason. It's the 28th, which is a Wednesday, and the 30th, which is a Friday, and the 1st, which is a Saturday. We've got two shows on Saturday, a matinee, mm -hmm. matinee and also an evening show. Unfortunately, Thursday we can't do because the school, which is Great Worldly School, has unfortunately arranged for a parents' evening that day. Okay. So we've had to split up. So yeah, so I, a lot of people will get confused about that. So it is 28, 30, and the 1st of July, yeah. Now, the show itself uh, was actually uh, performed as a read-through as part of the Wolverhampton Literature Festival earlier on this year. And it gives uh, a background to some of the environmental challenges we face and hopefully uh, a few th uh, thought-provoking uh, moments to, to help us avoid the catastrophe which could still happen. Exactly. Yeah, I think it's very topical. And in a sense, the story uh, goes across three generations. But it is very contemporary because it highlights three main principles of what's going on around in the world. First of all, not all migrants that come to this country are illegal. That's the first point. And this young man, Maniolo, who is the star of the show, uh, comes here to basically find out a cure for his wife's infertility. So that's the first point. 
without giving much away as to why infinity occurs, that's another story. Secondly, the fact that climate change has had a huge impact globally and also the plastic pollution that has impacted on biodiversity and also marine animals is huge. Forgetting the impact on humans, not forgetting the impact on humans. And thirdly, the fact that a lot of the impact of climate change is in 90% of people that are innocent in this world. So it's the 10% that create the fumes, the fossil fuel burning and all the gases that they produce, the greenhouse gases, and the people that suffer are in fact in those countries where there is not much gas produced. Yeah. And, and so whilst, you know, you've got this 90% who are, are mostly on the receiving end of it and the 10% who are creating, even though we are within that 10%, it is not always that easy for us to be able to make that switch and move away from the likes of fossil fuels the likes of plastics our everyday choices we have some consumer power but it is very difficult to take it further than that and then then this again will give us you know, food for thought on how we can make every bit of difference we can i think it's it's important to i think a lot of people increasingly are appreciating the importance of climate change and how it's impacting on our planet. But I think they're saying, it's not my problem. Somebody else will sort it out. It is everybody's problem. We've got to raise awareness. We've got to meet the problem. We've got to divert a potential catastrophe. You see, a lot of people feel that they might, we might have actually crossed the tipping point. You know, the corals have died a lot of deforestation, particularly in the Amazon, which, which Amazon is the, are the lungs. You know, the forests there are our lungs. They produce a lot of the oxygen around the world. And their de deforestation there is causing a lot of problems. The corals, 20% of them have already died, impacting on, 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 uh, on marine life. So all this is come, going to come to haunt us. And the earlier that we realize it, the better it is. And a lot of the principles of what happens as a result of climate change are expounded in this story. Yeah, because we don't want to find ourselves in a position whereby as a species we are creating a massive extinction event. These things have previously been left to the likes of meteorites to come down and destroy parts of the planet. We don't want to be that next big problem. But I think... Yeah, as you've said, we we could easily have gone over a tipping point where things have started to change, and it's how much of that is irreversible, and it's what we can do to mitigate the circumstances, and that can be you know, what we do to, from a, a greenhouse gas point of view or an, a, an environmental pollutant point of view. Because as you mentioned, things get into the food chain. Microplastics end up going from smaller creatures through bigger creatures and into our own food. And we could find ourselves effectively reaping the, uh, the, the, the ill-gotten gains of uh, uh, you know, the, the, the environment's uh, uh, abuse that we've done on our plates. No, absolutely. So people don't realize, let's give you a small example, that extra heat on children can impact on their education, on their achievements at school. They get a lot of headaches in places like India. Air pollution. Air pollution has got inside it what's known as um, PM 2.5 microns or less. And this travels for thousands of miles from one country to the, another. And this, this uh, particulate matter can escape the lung, get into our brains, get into our hearts, get into our pancreas, get into our livers, causing cancers, causing dementia, causing heart attacks, causing strokes. All these are increasing at the moment. And the future textbooks that will be written will have air pollution and climate change as a cause of a lot of what's happening around the world. And this play is expounding a lot of what happens. People become sick, all sorts of things happen. Businesses go, mm -hmm. animals die, all sorts of things happen in this play. But there is a big twist in the play at the end. And that I won't, can't tell you because okay. that is a sting in the tail. It's absolutely brilliant. Okay, well, no spoilers, but uh, the, the play itself, how did it come about? How was it written? Well, I wrote the play, I wrote the story, 
about uh, 18 months ago. And then I got uh, two people to help me write the play. And that's uh, Jade, uh, Jade Smedley from one of the Ormiston academies. And uh, also Paul Ingalls, who is a head teacher mm-hmm. at Goldsmith from the Windsor Academy. So they both uh, did, the, uh, did the play. And then it's very, very difficult to get black actors. But I had a lot of contacts with the church and schools Mm -hmm. through my WhatsApp project, World Against English Plastic. And through there, I was able to, with difficulty, get the right people. And now we've got something like 10 people as a cast. So we've been rehearsing over the last uh, six months. Mm -hmm. Yep. So hopefully... Yeah, hopefully it'll come to fruition all on the 28th uh, when we're ready to go. Well, tickets are priced at £10 for adults, children £5, students £8, and it is noted that under-16s must be accompanied by an adult. Uh, There will be themes here which obviously are naturally disturbing because we're talking about an environmental catastrophe and the future of life on this planet. So, uh, you know, this is not looking at uh, light subjects, as it were. So it is Wednesday the 28th, Friday the 30th, and Saturday the 1st, as we go from June into July. And you can uh, get your tickets via ticket line and that is ticketline.com to uh, be able to pick up those tickets and be part of uh, the, the start of, of a change hopefully and i know there are many environmental projects out there at the moment but this is again another very worthy way of, of getting a message across and talking to people directly and i think through the uh, the arts that is going to be the, the easiest route to be able to get this message through and hopefully start to make a change because everything that any of us does is a positive step. No, that's great because I've also written a novella uh, of this of this particular play, mm-hmm. which has been accepted for publication. Mm-hmm. So we're just negotiating and hopefully it will be out in the market uh, in the next few weeks, if not a few months. And uh, I think the most important thing is people coming to see us, visit us, work with us. And it's not about making money. The first four rows are 15 pounds. All the rest of them are 10 pounds. Children are all at five pounds and students are at five pounds. So it's really basically not even breaking even. But the point is that I think if you did a free play, hardly anybody will come Mm -hmm. because you have to put value to it. So that's why we put a bit of value to it so that people will come. And it means that you don't get it completely out of pocket as well, which is always absolutely, good. Absolutely, no, absolutely. And it's great, Worley High School uh, on those th- uh, three dates, and there's a matinee on the Saturday. And if anybody wants more information, it's info at wasupme, there's no T in it, wasupme.com. Okay, so wasupme.com. So it is the 28th and 30th of June and then the 1st of July and full tickets online at ticketline.com. The Plastic Migrant is the name of the production you're looking for. And this is life changing stuff and hopefully planet improving stuff as well. That's right. The, 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 the three shows are in the evening. There's one matinee at, uh, at 2.30 on a Saturday afternoon. Uh, have a, a great time bringing this play to the stage and sharing a vitally important message. We look forward to further outings for this, and we'll talk about those in the uh, the months uh, to come, I am sure. But for now, Professor Abdul Gatrad, OBE, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jason. Bye-bye now. Bye. To celebrate World Ocean Day, we have got two people who know a thing or two about the contents of our oceans and how we want to keep them there and happy. I'm joined now by Betty Zirkelbach, manager at the Turtle Hospital, and Dr David Vaughan, founder of the Plant a Million Corals Foundation. Good afternoon to you both. Good afternoon. Now, uh, Betty, first of all, uh, let's start with you, because even as we speak, you have a a kind of a a turtle ambulance uh, that you're travelling in at the moment. Yes, we're in the Turtle Hospital Ambulance, and we're on our way to release two juvenile green sea turtles. So uh, how did they find themselves in your care? Um, that's a good question. Well, the visitors to the Keys, they come through an educational program when they visit the Turtle Hospital. Six out of ten of our rescue calls come from people that have been through our educational center. So it's actually visitors 
and residents of the Keys that are out enjoying the water, diving, fishing, boating, that find these injured turtles, we have a 24 hour stranding hotline. They call us and we get help on the way. Yeah, so you say the Keys, it is the Florida Keys that you are in. And I mean, this is one of those destinations in the world which is taking its marine life and the environment very seriously. It is. And the sea turtles are an iconic um, marine animal in the Florida Keys. They're kind of the face of our marine ecosystems. Um, what we see happening to them is eventually going to affect all of life. So not only, even if you don't like sea turtles, it's something you need to pay attention to. How could you not like sea turtles? They're amazing creatures and I so know. wonderful to look at. <laughs> I agree. I agree. And they are the world's oldest animal. Um, what that means is that they are the oldest animal known to man. They were swimming in our oceans when dinosaurs were roaming on the land. And that's why they're what we call the canary in the coal mines. And we're really paying attention to what's happened to the health of our sea turtle population. Absolutely. And, and the health of that population as well is also mirrored by the effects that have been happening to coral reefs too. And uh, David, with the uh, the work that needs to be done, I mean, in the last 40 years, I mean, 90% of uh, live corals that once actually dominated the world's reefs are sadly no longer there. Yes, it's uh, they also happen to be like the polar bear and the turtle and and the corals uh one of the factors that should be a wake-up call for us for our oceans and our planet and so we've lost 50 percent of the corals worldwide and in some places like the florida keys that's as much as 90 percent and so uh people who have uh snorkeled or dove uh, 30 years just 30 years ago or so uh see a whole different thing than than the children that are learning to dive today and so uh, what happens on the reef really affects the oceans. What happens in the oceans really affects us on land. We're in a m minor part of this planet. It really should be called the ocean planet or the blue planet. And um, we better pay attention to what's both in the oceans and underneath the surface. It's been a secret life before um, recently. Now people know what grandeur is underwater as an underwater forest we are losing so much of it. The good news is there's places like the Turtle Hospital that are trying to keep up. There's places like Coral Restorations who are growing corals now and planting them back on the reef. And so uh, there's hope that we need to do something, but we need to do it quick and we need to do it at scale. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, corals are strange, strange uh, uh, beings. Uh, and uh, I know that the plight has been hampered by so many things, not only the changing temperatures in the waters, the quality of the water that's there and, and pollution, but also uh, I, I know as a kid I was given a, a piece of coral which came from uh, who knows where in the world that uh, was picked up in a shell shop in, in, in Wales. And when you're getting things you know, harvested like that as well, obviously that is an issue and has caused this sort of Depletion. Yes, I, I first got involved in uh, restoration of corals for the ocean because I was actually growing corals for the aquarium trade, thinking that I was doing a good job in growing corals in tanks so that people didn't have to take live corals from the ocean to put in their reef tanks or home aquariums. Then I was uh, basically uh, challenged by the Cousteau grandchildren to say, Why am I growing corals for pet shops? Why aren't I? growing corals for the reef. And so I changed direction 20 years ago and been doing restoration for uh, budding corals as our underwater habitats back together for all the other organisms that also rely on the reef as their home. So, so what is a coral then? How, how, how is it alive? What does it do? Yeah, so the corals are one of the most strangest and curious organisms on the planet, in my opinion. Um, a lot of people say, why are you studying corals? Don't you? We know everything about a coral. And I usually ask them a question back and say, well, can you tell me what a coral is? And they say, well, I'm not sure. If, is it an animal? Is it a plant? Is it a microbe? Is it a living rock? And I said, the answer to that is yes, 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 and yes. <laughs> and so it, it is three organisms from three phylas all living together as one. And uh, it's so crazy that we just are learning about these magnificent, you know, group of organisms that have this symbiotic relationship from a micro community, a single cell out marine plant or algae that lives inside the, the small animal polyp, 
that makes its own calcium carbonate skeleton that becomes rock. And so uh, it's a shame that we are uh, just finding out about these curious creatures right at the time when we're impacting them with so much stress from climate change and all those other factors you mentioned. Absolutely. And so I want to make sure that people realize that this is something that we can actually do something about, though. Because uh, if you came to me and said, Dave, can you grow more polar bears? I'd have to say, no, not really, but I can grow a million corals. And so we have now the potential that we can grow these things at fast speed in large numbers, and we can do underwater restoration just like you do reforestation on land. Well, it sounds absolutely uh, an amazing project. Uh, and Betty, again, with the, so much work that you're doing looking after the turtles, it's about the whole environment, isn't it? Not when it can never be any just one part of it. Good morning, sir. It is, and the, the, the sea turtles are very dependent on the corals and the, our reef systems to, for survival, uh, as all our marine creatures are. Uh, we currently have over 50 sea turtles at the turtle hospital that we are caring for, and being able to release these two today, it just not only gives the world hope, but gives us hope for our oceans and all the marine life that lives in it. Well, it's, it's an amazing good news story. First of all, where can we find out more about the Turtle Hospital? Um, you can follow us on social media. We're on all the platforms, Facebook, Instagram. We do live feeds a few times a week, so you can keep track of our patients to see what's going on. We're a fully licensed veterinary hospital. We do surgeries in-house, collect blood, do x-rays, and all kinds of exciting things. And it is, we're very transparent. So you'll get to see all that on our live feeds. You can go to our website at turtlehospital.org. That's O-R-G. And come see us in the fabulous Florida Keys. We have educational programs 365 days a year. Yep. So if you are looking for a holiday and you can get to the Florida Keys, certainly pop it into the turtles and uh, leave you uh, a, bit of, a bit of cash as well, just in case uh, you've got a turtle that needs a bit of extra care. Yeah, so we are a nonprofit. We accept donations. You can adopt a turtle. Um, we will not send the turtle to you, but you can help in its <laughs> care. It's a fun way to follow along with the news at the Turtle Hospital. Absolutely. I'd love the pet turtle, but I, I know it's better off in the wild. So that is an important factor there. Do not adopt a turtle at home. Only give the cash to the guys in the Florida Keys. And, and David, tell us uh, where we can find out more about the Plant a Million Corals Foundation. Yes, the same thing. Our website is plantamilloncoralsfoundation.org, and you can go online there. You can also see a couple of our uh, pieces of literature. Uh, we have a new book that's just come out for the general public called The Secret Life of Corals, Sex, War, and Rocks That Don't Roll. <laughs> and it's about what's happening in the ocean. And, uh, you know, it's a nice book. It's, it's a book about what a lot of marine biologists grow up doing. And then at the end, I have the hope of what you can do to make it better. So there's 18 things that the person in the general public can do with their own lives that can make it better for this planet uh, just every day. Because if you change some of the ways you live, you can actually vote with your pocketbook of what you purchase and what you do and what you eat. Absolutely. Also, search for World Ocean Day to find out more about the whole campaign to make sure we're looking after the amazing array of creatures we have out there and we need to keep them going. We need to make sure that we're not responsible for the depletion of these amazing creatures from our seas. Dr. David Vaughan, founder of the Plant a Million Corals Foundation, and Betty Zeckelbeck from the Turtle Hospital. Thank you both for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you and happy World Oceans Day. That's all for this week. Thank you so much for joining me back with episode 730 next week. I'll see you then. Turn off an M. Goodbye from the mill bar. 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 Yeah. Goodbye from the mill bar. Yeah.